Hey gang, welcome back to Jay Daddy's Garage. Today's video is gonna be about this 2006 Mazda 3 that my son drove for many, many years. It has an emissions problem, and I'm gonna show you what's going on and what I could do, or hopefully can do, to fix it. So let me give you some history on this car. It currently has 280,000 miles on it. My son has been driving this car for about the last nine years. The only thing that we've ever had to really work on is the brakes. I have a video on this doing the brakes. It's one of my better videos. And I also changed out the tensioner for the serpentine belt. Other than that, things have been fine. Now, a year ago, it would not pass emissions. Maybe it was two years ago, but I did some work to it. And now it won't pass emissions again. Now, my son has bought himself another car. He gave his car back to me and said, do with it what you want, fix it, sell it, whatever. So I'm gonna go over some things that are wrong with this car and what I'm gonna to try to do to fix it. All right, start the car up. Check engine light is on. You can see the mileage there, 281,000 miles. I'm going to hook up my Actron code reader and show you what the codes are. So the nice thing about this is right underneath this little panel, there's the mount point for your OBD2 sensor reader when you do emissions. So it's just a matter of lining it up, plugging it in. Looking at the code reader, main menu, vehicle diagnostics. This one has an auto ID function built into it. I hit enter. Please turn the key off, off for 10 seconds, then turn the key on. It's pretty simple. Keys on. Enter. Now it takes a few minutes. 2006 OBD2, yes. Hit enter. Again, it says IM monitor tests are complete. Enter. Communicating with vehicles, reading codes from engine module. I don't know how well you can read that. Um, IM monitor since DTC's cleared. So I'm going to page down using this little button right here. Now, this is an older model, but it's very similar how they all operate. So I'm going to go through these. Here it says read codes. Okay. P2004, intake manifold runner control stuck open, bank one, confirmed. P2009, intake manifold runner control circuit low, bank one, confirmed. 2177, system two lean, off idle, bank one. Again, 2002 P2004, 2009, 2177, code summary. Okay, so again, the P2009 is the one I'm going after. All right, so you look up that code, P2009. It says the code means that the intake manifold runner control circuit has excessively low voltage for bank one. Once the ECU figures out that the low voltage is present in the intake manifold runner control circuit, a check engine light will be triggered. By default, what I usually see on this, the repair, is to replace these solenoids. These solenoids, if I go to Amazon, Tamkin is one of the companies that make these. You can buy these, replacement solenoid, for $22.99. There will be a link in the description. Now, this is something I've changed before. I actually swapped these out. But there's a test you can do to see if these solenoids are bad. Not very complicated. I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so the solenoids are underneath this tubing right here. You can pull these tubes out of these carriers just to give you a little more access. This stuff will rotate out of the way a little bit. Down here, this is your two solenoids. So you have this brown one and you have this black one. Basically, if you just squeeze the clip, these should pull right off. And that little clip, uh, if you can see it right there, just push on that and it pulls right out. The other one, same thing. Squeeze the clip, pulls off. You can set those up out of the way, get them caught up in this tubing if you want. Now, from my understanding, inside of that, if you look at this clip, there's two prongs inside there. So this is the female end and this would be the male end has two posts sticking up. So in order to test these, and I've seen it done, and I'm gonna basically replicate that test, the two prongs that are inside 
of each one of these solenoids required power to be energized. So you make two wires. Basically I just took little flat uh, connectors, crimped them on the end of the wire. One would be power and one would be ground. So I'm going to make the yellow one, in this case ground. What you want to do is the forward pin facing to the front of the car is where you want to put on the ground. So I'll put that one on the front and this one on the back. All right, so the wires are connected. I'll just show you down inside there. There's the two wires. Now if you look inside of that rear solenoid, you can see those two little pins. And that's all I did was slip around those on this part, on this solenoid. And obviously you want to make sure these connectors aren't touching each other. Got to keep a separation. Now you could also do this with alligator clips. That's probably a lot easier. What I'm going to do now is take the yellow wire and I'm going to stick it into the little opening that's on the battery terminal so I have a ground. I'm going to make sure that this other one, I may just hold it because I want to make sure it's not making contact. It might be easier if I just hold it there. But I'm going to make this contact the positive terminal on the battery and we should hear a click. Hope you heard that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the rear solenoid. Okay, so I've reset the wires. Again, the ground is on the front one, coming up, touching the battery. Nothing. No clicks. So I think it's safe to assume that at least the rear solenoid is bad. Well, next part is changing it out. So here is the kit that I bought from Amazon. And it comes as an assembly. Basically it comes with both solenoids and there's uh, the mounting plate and all that that you can put in place. Should be pretty simple. Basically you're going to follow the hoses, take them off and put them on on the same locations. There's going to be mount screws that hold this together. Take those out and you know just basically swap the part. I could do a little check on this while I'm thinking about it. So just because I want to know, I'm going to reconnect my wires, hit the, hit the battery. Perfect. That one worked fine. Gonna go ahead and check this other one while I'm here. Again. That works. All right, next step, swapping it out. All right, I'll try to film as much as I can of this, but basically you've got little star bolts. Looks like that. T25 is the number on this one. And so I put that in my adapter on the extension. And I'm going to break those bolts loose. Once I get all those loose, I can look at my hoses. If you want to, put some tape on your hoses so you know which one is which, but they should be pretty self-explanatory. If you look, you can see this hose is to the left side, let's say. This one's to the right, so pretty obvious where those are going to go. Same way with these two down here that connect to this solenoid. There's one on the left, one on the right. Should be pretty easy to follow that. Uh, there are four screws that hold this plate on based on the four holes as you see in the perimeter. And then this extra hole right here on this little leg that sticks out, that's going to hold a carrier, a little plastic um, clip that goes in that hole right there. And that helps hold the tubes or the hoses in place. You can see it right there. secondary bracket on top of the first plate. 
one of the clips is deteriorated so apparently that was to support that wire bundle and then the hard part is probably going to be getting that clip to come loose off of the back side so I'm going to rotate it squeeze it a little bit there, there it goes So there we go. Again, I had changed this before. Hopefully, this time, it's not going to fail again. Alright, so I'm not going to film this part, but basically reconnect the clip, reconnect the hoses, put it down in place, or you can put it down in place, reconnect the clip, reconnect the hoses. Your choice. Whatever works for you. Okay, so everything is back in place, everything is connected. All I have to do now is put the engine cover back on. Lined up, pop into place. But that'll be the end of this video. Now, can I guarantee this is gonna fix your car? No, I don't even know if it's gonna fix this car. But all I can do is run some tests on it, drive it, see if I can get the engine light to come back on. And if it's something else, if it's deeper, I may have to go deeper. I don't want to do that, but if I have to, I do. Uh, otherwise, that'll, again, be the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.